Welcome to this episode on data visualization, part of a series of short films supporting courses I teach in data science and artificial intelligence. You can find more by following me on LinkedIn or as at binocularity on Twitter. Thank you for watching. We're now going to talk more about categorical data uh, and I'll show you some examples in Power BI. First, let's switch over to some PowerPoint. So this is the second session on categorical data. And the topics in this session include how to access Power BI user interface features, which include the derived calculations using custom data columns. There's a very powerful backend tool in Power BI for editing and calculating with data. We'll look a little bit at that. And then I want to introduce two types of data visualization, the pie chart and the tree maps. And we'll talk a little bit about those in the context of again, categorical data and how you visualize it. We'll look at this visual. Um, before I do that, I'll we'll switch over to Power BI itself. So this is the visualization that we looked at in the categorical data episode, but uh, it's a slightly different version than perhaps was there, but it, it has the same dashboard features. It's got a count of companies by the CDIT, SEIC, SIC four sectors. Um, it's got the percentage growth, the difference in uh, turnover between 2016 and 17 in each sector. Um, and it's got the total turnover per company. What I want to look at is how we can add a calculated column to the data that we can visualize in a bar chart. And we're going to look specifically at just a very simple calculation for the turnover. At the moment, the turnover is shown in thousands of pounds uh, and we want to put it into uh, just pounds so we just need to multiply the turnover by a thousand to get that um, and i'll show you in the data view so down here there's some views of data and relationships between data just go into the table view and you can see turnover for 2016 and 17 and this company isn't turning over 63 pounds it's really turning over 63,000 pounds so we'll just uh, create some new columns that correct that so this is going back now to the visualization view, the same fields. And actually what we want to do is look for transform data again. We want to edit the data, change queries in the data. So we pull up the Power Query Editor. And this is a tool you might have seen in uh, spreadsheets as well. If you get this type of error, don't worry. It just means it doesn't know where the data path is. So if you say go to error, it'll take you to the part of the applied steps. If you remember, these are all the steps applied to the data that we used yesterday. Um, and usually the first one is the source. And if you double click on that, we can see it's trying to pick up the wrong data. So we'll browse to the right place. To here, into here, into here. I'll we'll say it's this folder here. It's the same file uh, that we used in the last visualization. Click OK. And it's now corrected that data source problem that it had. Um, if we close and apply this for a second, we can double check that the data is OK. So applying the changes. And we can go and look back at table view and check that the same data is there, and indeed it is. So let's go back to the Power Query Editor. Uh, here's the Power Query Editor, and we've got these turnover columns here. And what we want to do is add a new column based on this one. Um, and to do that, you want to find the Add Column menu. Um, and there's a few ways to do it, but we're going to click on Custom Column. So this is new custom column name. We're going to call it uh, turnover, turnover 2016, markets UK pounds. And we need to select what's going to be the contents of this. So it's going to be the value of the column for 2016 turnover times by a thousand. So very simple. Click OK, and it's created that new column for us. By default, 
it's a alphanumeric column, and we know that this is a, a number. Uh, it's actually a whole number, but we'll call it a decimal number. Uh, and the same thing again, we want to do it exactly the same for turnover 2017. So go back to add a column, add a custom column. And now we're going to call it turnover 2017. 2017 brackets UK pounds. And select again the right turnover column and times 5,000. So these queries where they put a column name in, they'll go through every value in the column and do whatever you've told it to do. In this case, it's apply a formula to create a new column with every value multiplied by 1,000. Okay, done, and we can see that down there. Just correct this column to be a decimal number also, then close and apply, and we should be done. So you won't see any difference in the visuals yet, but you should see, if we look at the fields available to visualize, there are two new fields. These are derived fields. You can't tell here that that's the case, but the numerical fields uh, um, with the labels that we gave them. We can double check by looking in the view for the spreadsheet. Slide right to the end and there they are. Okay, back to the visualization. These affect this visual and it's currently got turnover in it and we really want now turnover in pounds rather than in thousands of pounds. So we'll just drop these new columns in there. Drag and drop will do. And then we can delete the two existing columns. So now um, we've got the sum more correctly because previously we were measuring in thousands of pounds but the sum is now more correctly uh, done in up to just over 300 million pounds in the IT and software sector of the total turnover for all companies in either in green 2016 or in blue 2017. Okay so now back in the PowerPoint what are the alternatives to bar charts? Well pie charts somewhat controversial among some people, but they're great for, for simple visualizations. Where they work, they work. So in this case, um, where there's a good order in the data, they're good for judging this part to whole relationship. How much of a proportion of the whole is the pie? If you sort the data, it can be a lot more um, valuable to look at the pie chart because you know, as you read around it, it'll always be getting larger or smaller. Um, and uh, in the research, it's been shown that what you're often really judging is the angle in the pie chart, not the area, but the angle. So you're doing a sort of linear judgment on angle increase. Um, some experts dislike these intensely. I'm not one of those. And um, I use them. I would use them only normally in 2D, so you can judge the angles near the middle. And one of the reasons for that, I'll show you now. This is Apple. In fact, Steve Jobs using a pie chart that's been tilted towards the viewer. So it's a 3D, in 3D, he's tilted the pie like this. And because he's drawn it in perspective, it has made the apple share, the green share in this pie chart, look like it's a lot bigger than it really is. Certainly, it looks bigger than 21.2%. And if you look at the flat 2D version of this on the right, it's distinctly uh, different in relationship to the other pies. So it's a very well documented lie visually. Uh, and when you're uh, presenting data, you have to either understand that 3D distorts data and make sure your users understand that, or be clear about why you're doing it and why it's not a problem. Okay, so back to the Power BI visualization. You can see across here, there's a lot of choices of visuals. And this one here, which is the fourth one across on the third row for me, is pie chart. Because of the way Power BI works, you don't have to draw a whole new pie chart from scratch. You can select one of the charts and you can click on the pie chart. And the formatting will come across 
into the new visualization. Some things here aren't there and we might want to add data labels. Okay, so that's pie charts. The one other um, tool that's quite useful visually, um, and you see it used a lot in the stock market, are tree maps. So what pie charts will vary the angle given by value. Tree maps are slightly different. And we'll just find it here on mine. It is the last one on the third row down. And again, I won't worry about rebuilding this from scratch. I'll just click on the pie chart and make it a tree map. So in this case, um, slightly different result. You'll get for each sector an area or depending on the type of tree map, uh, it'll be the width or the height of the boxes that relate back to the value. There's lots of ways to color these, but we go to advanced controls and we can do the color scale. We are going to do not count of SIC for name, but percentage growth. I'm going to do the average percentage growth and we're going to color it from red to green. We'll stick with the defaults here. So now you'll see that the more similar uh, zones, areas of uh, the CDIT SIC4 coding scheme are the same color and one which is substantially different is in red. So that highlights that Crafts has got a, in this case, lower um, average percentage growth over the two years, 2016 to 2017, than the other sectors. Okay, so for now, uh, that's it for categorical data. You've seen that you can go into the data, you can edit it with a Power Query Editor tool, you can add new columns based on calculations. And secondly, you can easily change visuals in Power BI if it's a similar set of data relating to a similar visual at least. Thank you again.